Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another Diestat discussion. Keenan Gray here from Diestat.com. We are thrilled to have the reigning Gatorade Player of the Year in Girls Cross Country and also an ESPYs finalist. I think you could call it that if that's, if that's a thing. Yeah. Uh, Miss Addie Ritzenheim from Niwot High School in Colorado, the sophomore, now a junior, uh, going to have a breakout season, of course, and hopefully maybe perhaps win another Nike Cross Nationals title. Addie, I really appreciate your time popping on here. Give us your take on, you know, kind of just all of last year, just – the awards, the accolades. I mean, it just seems like it kept piling on you, but it, it was rightfully so. Yeah, I would say it was such a surreal year for me. Um, it was a really groundbreaking experience. Like, going into the cross-country season, I had very... I just kind of stayed in the moment. I didn't really focus on my, like, results or anything. I didn't have any high high goals. But then towards the end of the season, especially at Nixon, I was like, wow, this like this could really turn into something. And... So I would just say from there, I really developed as an athlete, especially going throughout track season, but cross country is my favorite. So I'm very back to be, I'm very happy to be back doing that. And um, I would say overall, it was a great year for me individually and for our team Niwot. What I really challenge for a lot of the athletes that I've talked to in the last couple of weeks is what's one thing you can pick that was like the best thing of your entire season last year? I would say definitely NXN, like having, yeah, just for me personally, like that was a very big race, but then having my team there as well, we got runner up um, for nationals. Um, It was just, it was a surreal day and being there with my coaches, my, my parents, everyone was there. um, Yeah. Such a surreal day. I would say that was the highlight of my year for sure. When you look at last year, you know, entering that season, Obviously, we, we knew what the capabilities were. We, we, we know the background. We know what your folks have done as, as runners. What were you kind of expecting for yourself going into your sophomore season? Um, again, I had very low expectations, I would say. I kind of just ran for my team. I still run for my team now, but now I have some like more higher individual goals as well. So going into my sophomore year, I obviously, there was some expectations like, my dad was a professional runner and stuff, but I didn't let that get to my head at all. Um, and then just seeing what I did at NXN and like how well I did at NXR and state, um, that really just drove me for further success. When did it kind of come to, I guess, fruition when you realized like this was going to be an, a, a good opportunity for me to really showcase what I'm made of? Um, yeah, again, like NXN was very much that moment for me. Then getting getting honored to be named the Gatorade National Girls Cross Country Runner of the Year. That was also like that was just it kept going on, like it kept stacking on top of it. But I feel like it was important to not let myself get ahead, you know, too much. Like still stay in the moment and be with my team and my family. But overall, yeah, I would say NXN was the first start of that. Let's talk about NXN. I mean. That was an experience in itself, not just because you won, but like the race and the conditions. I'm not going to swear on here, but it was not a good day of racing conditions. Tell me what you thought of, you know, going into that race after watching the boys do their thing. And it's like, oh, now I got to go run through that now. Yeah, it was a very extremely muddy course. It was a very, very hard course. I think the reason why Colorado and like, our region did so well was because it was such a hard course as well. Like we run on those courses daily. Like we do our runs there. We do our runs in the mountains, up hills. So I think NXN was really, it was a really hard course. I'm not going to lie. Going up those last two hills and stuff. But I mean, overall, especially actually going after the guys, that was really hard too. Like every turn you had to be very strategic with where your your, where your footing is, where you're going to go. So, I mean, I think it worked to our benefit as a Colorado runner, but it was, again, a really hard course. What I thought was really cool was kind of seeing the, uh, well, I could say past now because now she's going off to North Carolina State, I think. Yes, Bethany Mahalik. I think she graduated <laughs> last year. Could be wrong. Yeah, she graduated. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. I always confused if she, because you always said, oh, I'm a junior. I'm like, well. I, it seems like you're a junior every single year. Um, but it seemed really cool, just like I said, the past and present, 
were right there at the very end. I mean, how, how special kind of was that for not only yourself, but really the state of Colorado? It was so special. It was, again, it was surreal. Like, Air Academy, the team that Bethany was on, their team won nationals. That was so exciting for them. And then our team, we got second. And we at NXR, I feel like our NXR is kind of like a mini NXN. If you say we have like Mountain Vista, Air Academy, Lone Peak, all in our NXR region. So um, I think we just were prepared. It was it was a strategic race, I would say. But it was just it was special for the state of Colorado as a whole, having everyone do so well. Even the guys like the guys did well, too. Mentally, you know, for, for all the all the Southwest runners going into NXN, you had to like make adjustments like you did at NXR Southwest because the course changed because of a pipe burst under the golf course. Do you feel like that was kind of that was a little beneficial for you guys and just even the Southwest as a whole? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, at our NXN, like our Southwest, it was really hot. That was the only difference, but it was still muddy. But NXR or NXN was very cold, but that pipe burst, like there's a pond, I believe, of water, like right on the course. That was, I would say that was kind of, it was different. I mean, NXR, we didn't really have that, but it was still like muddy and you kind of like, it was more of like a grit race. I would say like you had to mentally be there and physically, but. Um, I would say, yeah, NXR really prepared our Southwest region as a whole. So over the course of those next couple of weeks, what was what was it kind of like in your household? What was the, the, the attention like? Because I'm, I'm sure a lot of people reached out to you saying, congratulations, this is awesome. Oh, my gosh, Dathan's daughter is doing so well. Like, what, what were those last couple of weeks like during the, uh, the end of the year? Yeah, it was so special. I got to celebrate with my dad's team. Like, they like, gave me, like you know flowers and like congratulation cards and stuff I got like a lot of like congratulations but um I just stayed in the moment with my family we even went to Hawaii as like our Christmas present but um yeah it was just it was really fun like I took my break right after that too so I got to just spend time with family and friends and yeah it was all it was a very wonderful experience of the Gatorade Award usually people present that as a surprise what was that like for you when that giant trophy showed up at your high school right in front of you? Yeah, that was, it was amazing. Like I did not expect it at all. Honestly, Mm -hmm. my coach just brought me down. Um, He got me out of class and stuff and we went down to the track and then I thought it was going to be like a mini interview. I was told about like state or something and I was down on the track and then everyone surprised me, all my friends and family. And then I saw Caitlin Tui and she gave me, my Gatorade trophy. I'm a big fan of Caitlin Tui. So that was, it was all so, it was so special and so, so surreal. I, how much of a fangirl when you, when you saw Caitlin holding that thing? I got to be honest. I was like, this has got to be a dream. Like, I was like, this can't be real right now. It was, it was so cool. Cause I was like, not expecting that at all either. Like having everyone mm-hmm. rush up to me and then I like look over and I see Caitlin Tui. It was all, it was just so special. Well, and the Gatorade Award is not just obviously for, for what you achieve on the cross-country course of the track. It's also what you achieve in the classroom. I mean, how important are your studies and, and what you do also in the community? Yeah, I would say I I very much um, prioritize my academics as well as my running. I'm taking four AP classes right now and like two IB classes. So I keep up with my grades, but I try to balance my social life and my my like running and my schoolwork. So it's all about balance and like community stuff. I used to volunteer at the Humane Society. Um, I think it's just very important to be very well-rounded. And I think that's what helped me get that Gatorade trophy as well. And that's one of the big priorities, like I said, with Gatorade, when they, when they award that, they, they give it for someone that has a high GPA and, and does a lot of good things for their community. What did the winter look like for you? I know you got a chance to run at New Balance Nationals. You ran under 10, I think it was like what, 952 or something. You ran for yeah, a two mile. Just, I mean, such a, such a huge jump from what you made last year. Just tell us a little bit about the indoor season. Yeah, the indoor seasons, I would say we took, I took a long break. I think I took like three weeks off maybe um, just to kind of like give myself a little bit of a rest. And like, I knew I'd be having a long track season. So the longer the rest, the better. Um, 
but we ran our first big race at, again, New Balance Indoors. So that was the first year we went to New Balance Indoors. Last year we went, or two years ago, we went to Nike Indoors. And that was also a very, that was a very fun experience. But we went to New Balance last year with the whole team. So that was all very fun. We got to celebrate and everything with our team. And then throughout the track season, I just did some like little mini races, little local ones. And then I ran state. I ran the two mile, the mile, the 800 and the four by eight. So I ran a lot of events to help our team. Our team won. So that was very exciting. And then I ran at Brooks PR. Brooks PR didn't have the best race there, but it was a very fun experience overall. And I learned a lot from that race. You had a lot of miles under your belt, I guess, this outdoor track season. I'm sure you're, oh, yeah. you've definitely felt it throughout the season. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, what to me, and, and obviously I was there for it, I got to see it. You know, Penn Relays was a big deal for you to win that race. And that was after you had signed your NIL deal with On. How cool was it to, you know, race at Franklin Field for the very first time and, and of course, get the win in your very first time there? Yeah, it, the energy of the crowd was amazing at Penn Relays. I really, really wanted to have a great race there, especially after signing my NIL. I really wanted to, like, show the crowd something, you know, do something special. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was so surreal. We had my teammate Olivia with me. She also ran in the three k. My coaches were there. We had a sprint team do the four by one, um, and then yeah, we went out to dinner with like the whole on team. Like on is so supportive. They really take care of their mm-hmm. athletes. So it was so fun to just be there and be present with everyone and feel the energy of the crowd. It was it was amazing. What was, other than being a competitor and, and racing there, what was your favorite part about the Penn Relays? That's a hard one. I loved everything about Penn Relays. I would say definitely probably signing my NIL in the moment, like announcing it. Mm-hmm. I got to have my, my dad there, my coaches there. Everyone was there. It was so It was so fun to see everyone be so supportive and stuff. And, I mean, obviously racing was also a very big part of that. Um Maya Ramston, she's the 1500 NCAA yeah. champion. She got to hold the finish line tape for me um, in the 3K, <laughs> so that was really exciting to have that little connection there. And just be be with everyone, all the on supporters. It was, and it was again, it was so amazing and so special. What did you think of the uh, Jamaican contingent? Oh, it was so cool. They There was a very big like Jamaican population there and stuff. Um, they, they brought the energy to the stadium so much it was it was incredible like, I couldn't describe in words how much that energy really helped you as a runner in the stadium um you just feed off the energy of the crowd so I think it was just so surreal to have them there too you've gotten to experience a lot of cool things this year like I said you were Gatorade player of the year NX NXN champion got to run at New Balance Nationals I think personally the best part of your entire year was going to the ESPYs how cool was that? You know, not only obviously like every Gatorade player, national player, I should say, gets to go to the ESPYs and, and watches the show, gets to hang out with some of the best athletes in the world. I mean, you're in a circle there. That's that's like a it's a fraternity sorority for you, if you will. Like not very people get to be part of that. I mean, how how truly special was that? It was so special. Um, it was the first time I got to like travel, like I got brought out for something that was like I had to do a race. So that was very exciting too. But um Gatorade did an amazing job hosting all of us. They had us on a very fun schedule. We did we got so many unique experiences. Like we got mm-hmm. to again go to the SB Awards, we got to see the show, we got to <clears throat> do some like interviews with Gatorade. Um it, it was so fun. Like we got it was so it was such a great like experience just overall like getting to be with all the athletes too like they're they're so incredible you get to see how much work they put in and just being having all of us together was really fun too like i made so many special connections that i'll have mm-hmm. forever um and yeah Gatorade did an amazing job again like having us there and giving us that wonderful experience we done a red carpet before I've never been before, so that was the first time. Yeah, what was it? What was it like just walking on the red carpet? You know, 
you probably have to like talk yourself in the mirror. It's like, all right, what's my best pose? Like, how am I gonna look at the camera? What's my wave gonna look like? Do you kind of prep yourself a little bit for that? Yeah, our chaperones kind of gave us some like tips and tricks and stuff. Um, it felt like you were in a movie. Like there, you'd see the mm -hmm. palm trees, like the LA like landscape, like backdrop. It was so, it was so cool. Um, and like there'd be pictures you got to see, like all these famous people that you know from like social media and stuff. So it was, it was very, very fun. Who was the one person or a couple of people you saw? It's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Yeah, um, I'd say like the hostess, uh, Serena Williams. Like everyone, when when you saw her, like everyone stopped and like was taking pictures and stuff. That was really cool. Um, just like a lot of athletes in general, like there is Paige Buckers, Paige Buchers. Um, she was there too. So that was also very fun. What about celebrities though? Did you see any celebrities that you're like, oh wow? Um, I wouldn't say I saw many celebrities. We did like a lot of interviews on the red carpet, so I wasn't like looking around too much. But I know my friends saw a lot, so yeah. Yeah, definitely would have been a cool opportunity just to you say, "Hey, look, there's Lin Manuel Miranda over there," <laughs> or "Hey, there's so and so, Billie Eilish, just hanging out over there." Mm -hmm. Something yeah. Like that. So, um, but you know, it was kind of a it was a very cool night just in general for the running community when Sadie won the national. Gatorade Athlete of the Year, if that's what they, if, if you want to call it that. Yeah. For for the for the whole running community, as yourself as part of it, obviously, how, how special is that? The fact that we see somebody like a Sadie Englehart winning that and representing all women and all distance runners. It's so inspirational. I mean, she works so hard. She's so deserving of that award. Um, being there to see her like true reaction, it was so it was like very emotional. Like. She was so happy. She deserves it all. And she's a great person in general. Like I got to, I got to be really close with her on the trip too. So just seeing her um, support the running community as a whole, that was very inspirational. And um, I can't wait to see what she does her senior year as well. Like she's so talented. Um, yeah. And seeing her go off to NC state as well as with Bethany too, they have such mm -hmm. a strong team. So I can't wait to see her career develop as a whole. So is there a sort of a kind of a takeaway you've learned, from, like a lesson you've learned from her? Because obviously she's, she's one that's had the spotlight on her since maybe eighth grade, as mm -hmm. maybe as early as eighth grade, I should say, and obviously freshman year. But like, is there something you learned from her kind of like handle the spotlight, handle the moment uh, and not obviously overthink everything? Yeah. Like I think she does a very good job of staying in the moment. Um, not letting like social media get to her because I feel like that can be very detrimental mm -hmm. to one's like running career as a whole. But um, I feel like balancing like her social life as well. Like I know she's a great person. She's probably a great, she is a great friend. Like she can mm -hmm. do it all. So I think that's very important to have a good balance. Sounds like you had a busy summer, uh, not just including Paris. You got to go on a couple of trips as well, but Tell us a little bit about the summer and just the experiences they had in, along with the training that you've been doing as well. Yeah, after Brooks PR, I took, um, I would say like 10 days off and I started doing some cross training. So I was with the team for quite a bit. And then after that, we went to the ESPYs. So we went and did all that. And then I really got into my training after that. I started being, I started ramping up my training a little bit. And then we went to Crested Butte, which is a mountain town in Colorado that's at 12,000 feet. So, like, professionals, like, Emma Coburn runs there. Um, there's a lot of professional runners that go up there. So we had our little Niwot Crest Country team camp up there. We were up there for four days, I believe. So we got to do some hard training, some fun games, team bonding, stuff like that. And then... After that, the day after, we went to Paris for eight days to watch the Olympics, um, specifically track and field. So that was really fun. I've been there. I went there last summer um, as well. So it was my second time being there. But it was it was a very fun trip. I got to see um, some of my dad's athletes compete in the stadium. It was a very fun experience. And then I came back from Paris and... Just did some training, and then I started school two weeks ago. Yeah. What was arguably your favorite part in the entire Olympics? 
probably the men's 1500 final. That was that was a very big moment, especially for me and my family. Yard got third. Mm. Um, he got bronze. So that was it was a surreal moment um, for him and his family as well. Like we got mm. to see him like hugging his family. It was a very emotional moment. Um, everyone was so excited and so happy. So I would say the crowd also, we had like, there's like light shows and stuff. Like they did a very good job of making sure the crowd was included. And I think that's what really, like they feed off the energy. So yeah, it was a very exciting moment overall. It's okay to say like Cole Hawker was cool too. I know he's not your dad's athlete, but it was a big turning point for American distance running. I know the the, um, men's 1500, like, all of the Americans did well. Like I think um, mm. Hobbs Kessler even got fifth as well. So um, having America really show up there, like all the American fans in the stadium were going wild. They had their American flags up. Um, seeing Cole Hawker just dominate that field as well, like seeing him do what he did at the Olympic trials, that was really inspirational as well. So that's, uh, we'll call it your fa- favorite men's moment. What yeah. was your favorite women's moment? I would say watching the women's 100 meter dash, even though I don't have okay. like, many connections to that. It was a very, um, it was just a very like, exciting moment. They had like the light shows. They, it, they really made it like, they made it a good show, I would say. So mm-hmm. yeah, I would say the women's 100 meter dash, which is very unusual, but. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm like, I would have never guessed the 100 meters. I would have maybe heard you maybe say Sydney's race in the 400 hurdles or perhaps Faith Kipigon winning a third gold medal in the 1500 or Beatrice Chabet completing the, the double in the, in the five and the 10. So that's interesting that you, are you a Julian Alfred fan or you just like the sprints as a whole? I just like the sprints as a whole. Like, I think it's like, it's different from what I do. So I think it's just, it's mm-hmm. really cool to watch. So you so you, you really enjoy like watching athletes like like Shakari, like Melissa Jefferson, Brittany Brown, uh, TT Terry, all those athletes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's cool to hear, especially that's the thing. You don't have to be a distance fan. You can like everything yeah. about track and field. So, anything else you really got to check out when you were in Paris? And obviously, there's uh, not just track and field. There's other stuff going on too. Yeah, we didn't see any other like Olympic. Um, activities, but we got to do some like tourist stuff. We got to like walk around Paris. We got to see the Louvre and the Eiffel Tower and stuff. But other than that, we spent a majority of our time at track and field. I did some runs around the Paris, like the city of Paris with my dad and my brother. But other than that, I would say, yeah, we were very focused on the track and field part of it. What's it like running in Paris? It's very hard to run in Paris. There. There's not many trails. You have to kind of just find the sidewalk that goes for a long way straight. Um, It's like a lot of stopping, but you you get to see cool stuff. It's different from from Niwot. Is it cool just, you know, running along the Seine and you see the Eiffel Tower right there and it's just like, wow, that's like a painting right there. Yes, for sure. That's what my dad always says he loves running um, in different places with me and my brother. That's his favorite yeah. part of the whole entire trip, just getting to see cool stuff on runs that are different from Niwot. Did you guys run on the, the cobblestones that were part of the marathon course? Um, Not p- the ones that were part of the marathon course, no, but we we ran just kind of everywhere. We kind of found like a new little path each day. So like it would be some cobblestones, but not part of the marathon. What's it like running with your dad? Um, I think he just... He likes to talk a lot, <laughs> which is kind of funny, but uh, I think he just likes to be in the moment with his kids. Um, he doesn't, like, try to race us or anything, which is like... Oh, come on. Is he competitive? <laughs> he's still competitive. He's he's very competitive. He he does it... He likes to run quite a little... He likes to run more than he should, I would say. So... Yeah. Yeah, but he doesn't, like, push us or anything. He's He just yeah. likes to be, yeah, in the moment with us. Does, are, is he is is he still a little bit faster than you? Are you getting closer to him, or is your brother getting close to him? Yeah, I'd say my brother and me we have like a five or ten second difference in our mile PR. So me and my brother okay. are pretty close. Um, but my 
dad. I would say he's not great at the shorter stuff. Like, I bet I could beat him in, like... Most old guys aren't. <laughs> yep. I bet I could beat him in, like, an 800. But, like, he could run miles on end at, like, maybe, like, five flat pace. Like, he's... He has the long distance in him still, for sure. Well, let's set up the date. Let's see an 800 on the on the nine watt track at some point during this this next year or so. Oh yeah, that'd be awesome to see. Mm -hmm. um, you know, looking ahead to the cross country season, like I said, it, it's going to be another big year. You, you, you have that target now in your back. You are the one being hunted after winning NXN, but your team also has high expectations. So, from an individual standpoint as well as a team standpoint. What's the biggest thing you are trying to obviously you want to win NXN again, but like what's what's your hope to accomplish this year? I would say just to top what I did last year, whether that's in terms of um a PR. Um, I don't want to put too much pressure on myself. I feel like I race better as like an underdog almost. Mm -hmm. But um it'll be fun just to see what I can do to improve what I did last year and to see how I can help my team this year especially since we have a young team. Um, I like to, it's kind of fun to take like a leadership role um, that our seniors left last year. So it'll be, it'll be fun for me and for our team. Are you ready to take on that type of leadership role? Because you are a junior, you are becoming an upperclassman. It is that time for you to, to become that captain on that team. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's really fun to like see how these girls on your team look up to you and how you can um, inspire them as well. Like they inspire me to be the best runner I can be. And it's like a give or take situation. We we run for each other, we, we run for NIWAT. So I think that's, yeah. I was talking with Elizabeth the other day about just the, the amount of talent that is back this year. I think it's one of the best group of girls across the country that we have seen in a long, long time, and especially just, just based on what we saw last year, of course, and like I said, the talent that comes back. What is it about this particular time in girls' high school distance running that is just, it's kind of surreal to be a part of, and like I said, you're you're a part of that that culture right now. Yeah, Um. I mean, yeah, like you said, we have such a deep field of, like, girls' distance running right now. We have Elizabeth Leachman, we have Sadie Engelhart, um, the list goes on. Even like Colorado has such a deep field of strong distance mm -hmm. runners. So I think it's just important to want what's best for each other. Like not to make it like too much of like a rivalry against each other or anything. Mm -hmm. I think it's just like we're we all do the same thing. Like we all we all have this in common. So I think it's really special and unique to be able to share this with each other and to see um how well we can all do. All right. What's the outlook for Niwot this year? What's the outlook for Addie Ritzenheim? What where can we expect you guys racing this year? Um, we'll be racing at Desert Twilight soon. I think that's at the end of September. So that'll be our big opening race. Um last year we perfect scored at that race. I got my PR from that race. So it'll be a fun, exciting one. And then NXR is also on that course as well. So I'll be racing there. And then Niwa is actually moving up to 5A for Colorado. Okay. So we'll be racing against Air Academy and Mountain Vista at our state meet. So that'll be very exciting. And then, of course, we hope to get to NXN as a team. But if not, I hope to make it as an indi individual. So sure. call it, The state of Colorado is just NXN part one for you guys. Let's just call it that at this point. Just yeah. based on the amount of talent that's back this year so well i really appreciate your time addy uh good luck in arizona for that first those first couple of meets and of course in the state of colorado this year of course addy ritzenheim from niwa colorado the reigning nxn champion here on the latest diastat discussion addy really appreciate your time thank you so much